السلام علیکم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ لیکچر نمبر ٹویلو وچ از ریگارڈنگ ڈفرینٹ اسپیشیز ٹرمینالوجیز دا آؤٹ لائنز آف ٹوڈے لیکچر آر واٹ آر ڈفرینٹ اسپیشیز ٹرمینالوجیز لائک مونوٹپک اسپیشی ریس پولیٹپک اسپیشی ریس کرپٹک اسپیشی ایکو اسپیشی انسولر اسپیشی سمپیٹرک اسپیشیز ایلوپیٹرک اسپیشیز سبلنگ اسپیشیز سپر اسپیشیز اینڈ سب اسپیشیز سب اسپیشیز آر مینی مور اینڈ ود ایگزامپلس دا لیکچر آؤٹ کم آفٹر واچنگ اینڈ لسننگ دس لیکچر اسٹوڈنٹس ول بی ایبل ٹو نو اباؤٹ ڈفرینٹ اسپیشیز ٹرمینالوجیز اینڈ دیئر ڈیفینیشنس اینڈ اسٹوڈنٹس ول آل نو نو آلسو نو اباؤٹ اسپیسیشن So the first one uh, which is uh, genetical, biological or biospecies. So it is a uh, genetical species or biospecies or biological species can be defined as it is a group of actually or potentially interbreeding natural population. So this is one point or one aspect. The second is that are reproductively isolated from other such groups. So there are two aspects of this definition. Number one. Actually or potentially interbreeding and reproductively isolated from other such groups. Any species is a biospecies. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, suppose uh, take an example of dogs, Canis familiaris, cats, uh, Phallus domesticus, and uh, goats, Capra hericus. So. For example, if a group of dogs living in a cohort and another group of dogs that is living in Lucky Maroon. Now, the group of dogs that is living in cohort, they are actually interbreeding with each other and producing fertile offspring. So, that's a species. But the other group is living in Lucky Marwat. So, they cannot interbreed, interbreed with each other because they are very very far away from each other so they are not actively interbreeding but they have the potential so the second point the potentiality mean they have the potential to interbreed if the lucky marwood dog and the hard dog they have a chance to meet so they can interbreed so number one aspect is they, they, they can actually interbreed or they have the potential to interbreed natural populations and the second they are reportedly isolated from other such group so now the other uh, another aspect is uh, there is a uh, like dog population there is cat population there is goat population now the dogs are not interbreed with cats cat did not interbreed with dogs cats cannot interbreed with goats goats cannot interbreed with cats these goats cannot interbreed capra hercules cannot interbreed with canis familiaris because they are different and That's why we call them different species because number one, they actually or potentially interbreed with each other and they are isolated from other groups. They cannot interbreed with other groups in the same uh, like vicinity or in the same uh, ecology, the same ecosystem. They cannot interbreed. They are separately isolated from other such groups like cats are isolated from dogs, dogs are isolated from cats. and the same way with goats so this is biological or biospecies another is a monotypic species so it's very clear from its name mono mean one and type mean typic mean type so all those species which do not have subspecies are called monotypic species so all those species which do not have subspecies are known as Uh, monotypic species or you can say that the those genera or the genus which include only single species but do not include any subspecies are known as monotypic species like for example vampire squid so vampire toetis and farnelis uh, is an example of monotypic species so this vampire toetis is the, is the genus and it has only one species the infernalis so there is no subspecies that's why vampire squid is monotypic subspecies monotypic species sorry and this is a uh, vampire squid and this is another picture of vampire squid so this is a vampire squid but that's what it look like 
uh, then polytypic species. So, uh, as the name uh, indicates, poly mean many and typic mean types. So, all those species which have subspecies mean they have two or more than two subspecies are called polytypic species. Uh, let's take an example. For example, tiger. Tiger, uh, the scientific name of the tiger is Panthera tigris. So, Panthera is actually a genus and tigris is a species in this genus. But there are many subspecies so for example the indian tiger is known as panthera tiger tigris tigris the chinese tiger is known as panthera tiger amiensis the siberian tiger is known as panthera tigris altacea or altica and the german tiger is known as panthera tiger sondica so these are different uh, subspecies of this tiger panthera tigris so this is Panther tiger, tigress or tiger is polytypic species because it contains subspecies. Then there is uh, another thing, the eco species. So eco species is again very simple, a group of population that are able to exchange gene freely without loss of fertility. For example, there are population, a group of population which are interbreeding with each other, they are exchanging the gene freely, but with out loss of fertility mean they are producing fertile offspring then there is a phylotropic species so phylotropic species any species that have the tendency to extend its range of distribution now uh, uh, species they originate once at a certain point on the earth on the biosphere but then they reproduce and then they increase their number and the population pressure increases and then uh, if these animals have proper locomotive organs if they have well and uh, if they have ways to distribute then they start uh, extending their range they move out from their original birthplace or, or original place and they distribute throughout the world and so now not all organisms have this tendency so those organisms which have the tendency to extend its range are known as phylotropic species and the opposite is uh, philopatric species those species which do not show any tendency to extend its range of distribution now this uh, uh, tendency uh, lacking is maybe because of their weak locomotive organs uh, their weak pillar physiological system or maybe there are barriers so there are many reasons but those species which have the tendency to extend this range of distribution are known as phylotropic species and those which do not show tendency to extend its range are known as uh, philopatric species so like uh, ph phylotropic species uh, those species which have the tendency to extend a strange will be distributed throughout the world or many biotic regions like for example cockroaches they are present everywhere mice rats are present everywhere uh, so uh, on the other hand certain species they are restricted to certain areas like you know kangaroo it is restricted to australia only uh, another uh, is a continental species. So it's very clear all those animals or those species which are found on large land masses are known as continental species. And the opposite of this is insular species. Insular, those species which are living on small isolated islands are known as insular species. So those which are living on vast land masses and those which are restricted to isolated small islands. Then cosmopolitan species now all those species which are found throughout uh, the world in major geographical region or major geographic communities ecological communities are known as cosmopolitan species and the opposite of cosmopolitan species is endemic species so those species which are restricted or confined to a particular or a peculiar or only one particular area and they are not present anywhere else in the world are known as endemic species so like uh, the, the cosmopolitan species you know the mice the rats the snail uh, sorry the earthworms hawks cuckoos they are birds they are present everywhere in the world but on the other hand endemic species if you look at the endemic for example now uh, like uh, giraffe are present only in uh, africa uh, rhinoceros are also restricted to India and Africa. Uh, you can see that the kangaroo is restricted to uh, Australia, kiwi is restricted to uh, New Zealand. So these are endemic.
exotic species so uh, species which belong to different geographical area but they are growing and uh, thriving in a new area for example if uh, if a species is introduced uh, from the actual place uh, which it belong for example if they are endemic to certain place but you uh, transport those uh, species or by chance they has been they have been transported to a new area and where they start thriving and growing so these species are now called exotic species like for example in pakistan we have uh, like um, uh, the, the the silver carp in pakistan is exotic species so uh, in pakistan we have exotic species the silver carp so the silver carp uh, the hypothalamus monitrix it is uh, like uh, exotic in pakistan so the chinese carp the hypothalamus monitrix it is exotic in pakistan uh, because it it is actually from china they have been introduced in pakistan and pakistan it is thriving and growing uh, uh, invasive species so it's uh, very related to the exotic species when exotic uh, when exotic species when they start affecting uh, the local fauna the growth or uh, whatever it is uh, uh, on whatever base it is but if it start affecting the local fauna and flora so it become a invasive species so the exotic species will become invasive species if it start affecting the local fauna and flora by destroying it or by uh, by competing with it another uh, uh, species is incipient species or sometimes it is also known as semi species so look in speciation uh, we have uh, different like stages for example a species it become geographically isolated and then changes start accumulating in them and with the passage of time they become different and different and different and different and different and the last stage they become very different it, it now become an isolated species so this incipient species is one of the stage in between like it is a group of particular species that are about to be genetically isolated mean about to they are not now isolated but they have like uh, accumulated they have accumulated certain changes that in a very few years or in a very little time they will become isolated from the main population but still at this time they are uh, like uh, they can interbreed with each other uh, but uh, very soon they will become genetically isolated from the rest of the species because of the geographical barrier between them so though at this time they can still reproduce with other groups of the species before their gene pool become too distinct so at this point their gene pool is not too much distinct that they cannot reproduce but soon they will become genetically isolated because of the geographical isolation so such species are known as incipient species then there are cryptic species so a species which cannot be described or differentiated from other related species mean a species sometime species are morphologically very similar but they are reportedly isolated or genetically they are very different from each other so that's why we cannot distinguish them uh, easily and such species are known as cryptic species or you can say those species which distinctive features are not clear like if you look at the animals they appear identical but they are genetically quite different so by looking into them you will say that they are same similar species or same species but when you study their genetic makeup they will be very different from each other so such species are very difficult to differentiate and such species are known as cryptic species uh, a little bit explanation so the species which are alike on the basis of observed features I mean when you observe them they are alike but when you genetically or when you look at them or you observe them sexually they are different mean they are sexually isolated from each other they cannot interbreed so one of the definition of the species is that they will sexually interbreed but they cannot they are morphologically similar but they cannot interbreed so such species are like cryptic species 
So there is a confusion between the term sibling species and cryptic species a little bit. Like the cryptic species are incapable of interbreeding, but the sibling species can interbreed and are not capable of uh, producing fertile hybrids. So uh, sibling species they cannot produce fertile uh, like uh, hybrids, but these cryptic species they can interbreed. Uh, are incapable of interbreeding but the sibling species are can interbreed so like in, the, in cryptic in the case of the cryptic species they cannot they're totally different from each other they cannot interbreed they are morphologically similar but they cannot interbreed but in sibling species they can interbreed but the hybrids will not be fertile uh, then let's talk about speciation so what is speciation so speciation is how new kind of plants or animals species created. Speciation occur when a group within species separate from other members of its species and develops its own unique characteristics. How it happens from the main population, a small amount, a small uh, like a small group of the species, they will become isolated geographically, and when they separate. Uh, from the main group so the needs are uh, in the new area the needs will be different the ecology will be different so because of that their own characteristics start uh, differentiating or developing develop and differentiate from the old one and then they uh, with the passage of time they become new species so this is how new species of plants or animal arise like the demands of the different population of the uh, sorry the demand of the different environment or uh, or the characteristics of the members of the new group will differentiate the new species from the ancestor because the, the the needs of the new environment are different from the older one for example this is the parent population and then a small number of uh, a small number from this population they become isolated so now they are geographically isolated they cannot meet with each other they are uh, very far away from each other so this new environment ha have new challenges and that is very different from the old one so they have to like uh, uh, compete they have to adjust uh, adopt themselves with this new environment and by doing so uh, different character characteristics will accumulate in them and with the passage of time these characteristics uh, uh, will accumulate in all of them and it will be passed from their parents to offspring and a time will come that this population will become so distinct that then you can name them a new species so from old new species will arise because of this isolation because of the isolation because uh, when they isolate uh, the, the gene cannot be like exchanged between them because they are very far away from each other they are geographically isolated uh, like for example if you look at the example of the Galapagos finches or in other words uh, Darwin finches so all these uh, uh, birds they, they they had a common ancestor from South American brain lane. So th this was the ancestor. Uh, the call. Th this was the ancestor finch with this normal beak from South American brain lane. But then, uh, because of their introduction into different environments, what happened? Different types of finches they arose from this common ancestor. Now, ground finches, tree finches, wobbler finches. And then again, these wobbler finches they developed into different structure like beaks. Some of them are like uh, modified beaks. Uh, they have modified beaks for seed eating. Some have like uh, flesh eating uh, for grubs eating. Uh, some are for like insect eaters. Some are bud eaters. Some are flower eaters. So according to the need of the environment in which they were introduced their beak uh, like uh, modified or adopted according to that environment and by adopting they become differentiated into different species so you can see from the common from the parent population from the common population so many different types of species of these finches they arose
uh, an example like this uh, we discussed the Galapagos benches so uh, if, if you want I will explain again it like different species of these birds live on different islands in Galapagos archipelago located in the Pacific Ocean or uh, of South America so these finches they isolated from one another uh, by the ocean and over millions of years each species of finch develop a unique beak that is uh, especially adopted to the kind of food or according, call, according to its environment. So some finches have large blunt beak that can crack the hard shell of nuts and seeds. So finches with beaks for cracking nuts and seeds. Other finches have long thin to probe into cactus flower without the bird being poked by the cactus spines. So uh, like for the uh, sucking of the nectar still other finches have medium sized beak that is for grasping of insects and because they are isolated the bird do not interbreed so now because they were isolated by very long distances they can they, they, they can they were not able to interbreed and when the passage with the passage of time every bird they developed into a unique species with unique characteristics Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, uh, see you in another part of this lecture.